ya comrades! Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 with Briarstone! Greetings! And good news, everyone! <laughs> it works! Yeah, Finally. so it turns out this is something that can happen from time to time. You select an army and you get no window and restarting seems to be the solution. Yep, I had to restart because now I can see what I click on. I do have divisions inside these armies. That is quite nice. <laughs> Didn't have that before. Yeah, yeah, it's nice when you actually get the user interface. That explains all the difficulty in, like, trying to get things to work before. And now you can assign a commander. Yep. Nice. I am going to be doing that very soon. Okay, and then shipping off your troops to, uh, to Spain. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that guy. Look, I have it. There it is. It's so amazing. Now, here's the thing about these commanders. I got, like, Field Marshal. He's a level 4. Skill 4, I should probably put him with it. To be High, higher skill it? is better. Mm -hmm. Like, because higher skilled generals and field marshals uh, just give your troops more of a buff. Generals can only command up to 24 troops. Field marshals can do more. Um, in addition to that, different people will have different traits associated mm -hmm. to them. Um, and sometimes you want to choose an appropriate person. Like, you know, if you've got like a panzer, like an awesome panzer armor guy, then maybe put him in a, uh, to lead an army that's really heavy on armor. But mostly higher level, more better. Because for every skill point you've got, it's 5% boost to your attack and defense. Okay. Commando. Out of supply, minus 50%. I like this guy. Oh, and a trickster. Meh. I'm going to go for this guy. General Vasily Kutznescott. I can't say that properly. Of course I can't, but there it good, is. Good. Neither one of us can pronounce anything for our <laughs> countries. We should, we should have just played as, like, UK and US or something. Ooh. All right, I'm going to unpause. All right, that is that is fair enough. Okay. Good stuff. I am just a month away from declaring war on Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi? Mm -hmm. On Shane. There we go. It's okay. In, in two seconds, it's going to just be part of the People's Republic of China. And then I will never have to pronounce that name again. The Republic of Spain will allow a volunteer force from our country to fight in their wars. Our troops are on their way to join the struggle. Very good. Now, I still have insufficient resources for different things. Yeah, and so... I suppose it's always going to be the case until I, of course... Now, you can trade if you want. Right? But then you... I, lo I lose civilian factories when I do that, though. That's right. You, you effectively spend civilian factories to get material. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, temporarily. Like, if ever you cancel a trade deal, you get your civilian factories back. But the question is, you can trade civilian factories away, and then you don't, you're not going to be creating buildings as quickly, but you'll be producing units more quickly. Insufficient resources just means you don't produce units as fast. Okay. And whether or not that's important to you is the big question. So I have the next type of guns... So I'm starting to produce those right away. <laughs> All right, this large division I am going to put in a theater named Take Turkey. Uh-huh. <laughs> there it is. So Turkey is a challenge because the terrain there is very rough. Lots of mountains, for example. Mm. Uh, a fast way to take Turkey is to actually plan a amphibious invasion across the is it is that the black sea that's the black sea right yeah yeah so like you line up your troops at the front and you try to push there but it's going to be hard to make progress because of the mountains and whatever but then mm -hmm. meanwhile you plan a couple of naval invasions to the ports on the the northern shore of turkey so you're going to be coming in behind their front line there Ooh, my justification is done let's go to war boom and you guys just go straight to the capital. All right. Um, what do I want to do? Stalin Constitution. Political power plus 160, which seems pretty good. How much political... I've only got... Is that my political power? No, that's my army experience. Political power oh, is... 141. Okay. Yeah, and you get... As, as a base, you tend to get two per day. Whenever you are... Um, uh, researching a doctrine that eats one per day. So normally mm -hmm. you effectively get about one per day. Uh, you're spending a little bit on uh, boosting ideology in China as well, just like me. 
But yeah, the static boosts are nice. Usually you don't pick an, uh, a focus just because it gives you political power, mostly because it leads to something else down the road. But political power is always nice because it lets you recruit new ministers and all kinds of cool stuff. I'm also working on uh, railroads now. Instead of, instead of purging, mm -hmm. um, I'm working on railroads. Now, why are all my divisions um, in red? Is there a reason for that? Uh, because you're communist? I, I don't know. Mm, like you, no, you get were, army colors. Maybe because I have units sent to battle over way? here. That was weird. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I can't see, so I don't know exactly what what redness is in this particular scenario. Mm hmm. But you know, like all your armies have different colors, right? Have you noticed that? Um. When you yes. create armies, they should assign like. Teal, red, yellow, green. Mm. Like the little flags for your various armies might be different colors. Or maybe oh, they're yes, all red. All my theaters, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like the but armies I mean, that my make up your units theaters. on my field. Like the little boxes that they're in, they're selected and they're all red. I'm supposing there's probably a, a filter that I got going on. Maybe. I thought that with color was just based on the color of the army. Maybe. I don't know. Parts of it I, just, are. I, I remember them being green, is all. And I would imagine that uh, my enemy would be marked out in red. Yeah. But now I'm marked out in red, and my enemy is what? Going to be green? Who's the bad guy? I am not sure. Are we the baddies? Um, could definitely be the baddies. All right. Um, I'm just looking around, derping around, looking and not doing much of anything. I do have a lot of uh, divisions set over here in my army to, to you know, attack Japan if Japan wants to get uppity. I almost will. want to do it now. They will at some point. Well, Japan's going to declare war on China at some point, so that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. Hooray, I'm getting factories for my focuses. Research and production. Add a political advisor. Prince of Terror. That sounds like a... That sounds like a good fella. Oh, there we go. Yeah, of course he does. Uh, Defeated. shang -Zi. Oh, okay. Boom. And done. Nice job. Excellent. Now, I should have actually started to justify my next war goal already. For maximum speed, but that's all right. We're going to start justifying against Jibai, Shan, Ma, whatever. The guys to the left. Those guys. Oh, I hate those guys. They're not my guys, they're those guys, and therefore they are worse. Worse than my guys. They're worser. Yeah, much worser. Hey, the Olympics. Okay. These guys are still doing what? Do you have anything specifically? No, go there, please. Even in a tooltip, they just refer to the people as the Ma, so there we go. That's easier to say. I have unassigned units. I have one unassigned... Hold on. How can I have one unassigned unit? How did I miss you? What happens? Are you training units? You might have just spawned one. Um, Actually, I think I was. I was training some uh, mountaineers. Because, mm. again, I'm, I'm on the, the on the border of Turkey there, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, yep. the mountains. So. I will definitely I be getting some mountaineers because the territory here is really mountainous. Can I... Oh, there you are. And just have you... Go for, uh, let's go for that one. Yeah, so I am training. Oh, national focus. Uh, we are doing what with that? Improve railway network is good. Transpolar flights, ocean going navy. I am going down this path. Anti fascist as well. I guess the other thing. Ooh. -hoo. I am not joining the Reich. <laughs> I should hope not. That would be a very different history. There oh, is, man. um, there is an idea. I think it's, is it German idea? It's the Unholy Alliance. Alliance with the USSR. No, maybe I'm thinking of um, something the US can do. But yeah, the, the Germany can propose an actual alliance with the Soviet Union. Which is pretty crazy. I should train a little bit more, maybe. I don't get enough rubber. I need more rubber. Because of that. 
Yeah. I need some more steel, although I believe I'll be getting some. You can switch. Um, there's a resource map mode. Shortcut key for it is F7, although you can just click on it in the bottom right, near where you would expect the minimap to be. It's like the open box. And you can do that, and it'll tell you what, like, what resources various territories have. Mm-hmm. But yeah, a well, lot of the rubber... easy enough. I, I just gave away one civilian factory, and I got rid of my uh, my shortage problem. Nice. Like, I could do that. One one civilian factory would also get rid of my shortage problem, but it would also get rid of, like, 20% of my manufacturing base. Mm-hmm. So, but... um, as, as I'm looking at Turkey right now, you said that you can go for a sort of a uh, naval or, or a coastal yeah. infiltration. Mm -hmm. How do I, uh, how do I set about doing that? Because I have to put them on ships, right? Do I have to move them to ships and the ships just take uh, them over? So or? convoys are what get used for that. Convoys handle shipping resources and supplies through the water as well as organizing naval invasions. Now, convoys are not something that you actually control directly. It's not like EU4, you don't have transport ships. Transport ships are, like, abstracted in here. And to a certain extent. Okay. The way you do a naval invasion is as follows. You, with an army selected, there is a button with the army selected, the little battle plan, little pop-up that happens. On the far left, it's an anchor with an arrow. Um, if, okay, so you so say... Select an army, and then at the bottom yeah. of the screen, that little battle plans pop-up. Oh, right, yes. The naval anchor. invasion order. Yeah. So the way it works is like this. You click that button, mm -hmm. then what you do is you click on a province to start the invasion from. They're going to be highlighted. It's going to be an invasion that's got a naval base, or a, a province that has a naval base in it. Okay. Say so, so you'll look at one of those, then you left-click on that province, and to say, this is where we're going to start from. Then what you do is you right-click a target province, and the um. invasion will target that province there. So, oh, I see. So if I wanted to take, for instance, uh, uh, Istanbul or, um, yeah. Sure. I wanted to take, if I wanted to take that, mm -hmm. I left-click on it, and then I right-click on which direction I want to go. No, no. Which is... No, you left-click on where you're starting from. Mm-hmm. So you left-click on one of your provinces, and then you would right-click on, say, Istanbul. Oh, okay. I understand now. I and think. then, and this is, like, kind of crummy. After you right-click, hit Enter. Because sometimes it doesn't properly assign people, and it's fucked up and stupid. But yeah, so again, okay. you select the army, you hit the naval invasion button, you l click, like left-click, normal click, on mm -hmm. where you want to start, and then you right-click on your target. So from, say, Sevastopol to Istanbul. Not that I'm necessarily recommending a naval invasion of Istanbul directly, it'll probably be defended, but there's that. Now, there's a couple yeah. more things that you should know. If you go, I'll go to your research screen. Okay. And just click That's on one. Which. What's that? Speaking of which, I have to get new research anyway. Oh, there you go. So on the uh, the tab, the first naval tab, okay, the blue anchor. Mm hmm If you scroll down all the way at the bottom of that window, there's a oh. transports tech. Ooh. This tech determines how many divisions at once can invade. By default, the first one, which hopefully you have unlocked, I don't know if you do or not. But yeah, the very I do. first okay. That gives you a limit. You can only invade with ten divisions at a time. Now, you could have two separate invasions. You could have two invasions of five, for example. But you couldn't have, say, two invasions of ten, or you couldn't have one invasion of twenty until later. So that's one thing. That's that's the amount of, of troops that you can invade with. The other thing is if you go to the infantry tab, like the leftmost tech tab. Okay, okay I gotta pause like for a second here. Yeah, because I have another pop-ups happening at the same yeah. time. But the leftmost right. tab for infantry, and then you scroll down to special forces, you'll see there's marines. Okay. Now, Wait, no, these are paratroopers. Where's but, marines? Well, yeah, just they're in that group, right? Special oh, forces, marines, yep. that's your mountain divisions and your paratroopers. Now, you can do a naval invasion with anything. You can naval invade with regular infantry, you can naval invade with tanks... But units are really shitty at amphibious assaults. If there's, like, if you send, like, a giant army of tanks and there's, like, one dude with a, 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 a slingshot on the coast, <laughs> yeah. he might be able to fight you off. Like, it's it's that bad. Right. Marines, however, don't get a very... They, they 
they mostly ignore the amphibious assault penalty. The okay. naval invasion penalty. So you, what you might want to do is make a group of like 10, a, a 10 marine division in an army and use them for your invasion. Okay. And, and just we, keep my current army um, that has some mountaineers in that. You know, just mm -hmm. keep that on the border to sort of defend and maybe push through the mountains at some point. Yeah. But That's specifically make marines... For, I have to research marines, actually. I don't have that done. Yeah, then you might want to do that. I mean, you got plenty of time before you invade Turkey, so it's that's probably fine to do. Once you have your marine, your marine tech, you'll be able to, like, design the marine division. It'll make one by default, but it'll probably just be, like, three marines and nothing special. You might want to make it bigger or more impressive than that. That'll be up to you. Um... Once you do that, you'll have the option of either training new divisions with the Marine template, or you could take some of your existing divisions and just convert them over to Marines. Okay. There's pros and cons to both. So I have some factories here, and once again, I am out of stuff to build, so I guess I'll just queue up one more infrastructure. And I can modify government, which I totally want to do because I want to have a boost to my division attack. And I have a war goal, so I am going to, in fact, declare war. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to unpause if that's okay with you. It is okay. All right. Okay. I'm just going to finish this guy. And then I'm going to get you to push. Push to the capital. Go, go, go. Fight, fight, fight. Win, win, win. There you go. Go this way. And that way. If we can do the same from the south, that would be lovely. Like right over here. Come on, win the fight. Oh, yeah, there you go. Nice. Right. And then come south. Yay, infrastructure effort. And a next research slot. I can start working my way. I'll have a third research slot. Oh, my God. Look what at me. What is happening? I'm going to be <laughs> super high tech in a second here. Go ahead and get more civilians, factories. I want more of that. We're not in war yet. Maybe I should be doing military factories, but damn it. Uh, I don't know. I need toilet paper. Yeah. More civilian factories equals more building of military factories later on now one of the things when you do get enough political power to change your government one of mm -hmm. the things that is going to be a very high priority is changing your economic laws like if you click on your country's flag in the top left corner it'll open up your political view of your country um okay okay and um in the bottom half of that window you see the thing that says laws and government yes the third icon is your ec economic laws if you click on that you'll see the list of different economy laws you can put in and I don't know what, what you currently are set to. I've got laws and... Okay, so I've got export focus, civilian economy. Civilian economy. No, sorry. Yes, civilian economy. So if you... I mean, if you click on that button, it'll open up a window to show you all the laws you can change to. So with civilian economy, 30% of your factories go towards consumer goods, making toilet paper. Mm -hmm. But if you switch to one of the most more military ones, fewer and fewer of your factories get reserved for, um, for uh, consumer goods. And more and more of your factories uh, will therefore be reserved for, like, actually building shit for the war effort. Okay. Total mobilization. Yep. Now, what's nice as the PRC is that's what I start as. Total mobilization. Total mobilization does take away a bunch of your recruitable pop population. Um, because what it does is it says, um, like... All of my dudes are going to be dedicated to working in the industry. And, like, not as much in the military. So you might not want to go to total mobilization, because it will, like, make it so you don't have as many people for your military. But, like, war economy. You're, you're going to aim for war economy as, as fast as possible. Because that's quite good. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll move my way that way. Actually, I've, I've got how much? I've got 107 political power. Maybe that'll be the next thing I do, war economy. But at the very same time, I just I just realized that I have troops that my, my five units, divisions, or whatever that I sent, 
Mm -hmm. I just now started to use them. They've been down here forever. Oh, they've been in Spain and not doing anything? Yeah, I suppose. I'm er not exactly. That swift. happens. Yeah, damn it. Whatever. So, I mean, you can now be I manually moving them around, or you can assign them to a front line and then give them an offensive line and then, you know, have them just do things on their own. Come on, surrender already. Visions. Get in there. Oh, I think my front line's all broken here. Let's cancel all that. Set your front line to here. Uh, tell your automated stuff to just go there and hit play. We'll try something like that. Let's see if I can get that and hold that line. I don't know if I'm actually going to go anywhere. <laughs> Whatever. Now, should I be having generals all... I should have them everywhere, shouldn't I? Yeah, all your armies should have generals. And field and or field marshals. Whatever. Commanders is, I guess, the maybe the right way to say it. Okay, I've got the research slot. Now I'm going to go down the left side of my army effort so I can get the no ahead of time penalty for infantry tech, which is going to be nice. Come on, scroll. That's 38, which is not what we want yet. We welcome our communist brothers. Yeah! Bunch of... Uh, um bunch of China just flipped over to me. I think right over hmm. here. Man, these guys are holding out a lot more than expected. <laughs> Doing okay, yeah. Well, I mean, I've taken tons of their land. I just don't understand why they haven't GG'd yet. But they do have one extra victory point left, so I guess that might be it. Yeah, they're at like... There we go. And Whoa, as I say go. that, they capitulate, take all states. Although I can't do it yet, which is kind of derpy, but... End turn. Now take everything. How is it that, like, I'm the only person in here and I still can't take it all in one eat? There we are. Done and done. Excellent. Republic of China. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Sink Yang would be a lot easier, I think, at, at the moment, uh, if you have me in there. That is going to be the next target, board. and I'm going to ask to join your faction. Oh, okay. Hello, I would like to be part of the common term, please. One sec. Does that actually work? No, it's not working. Um, let's see. You and then accept. Cool. Okay. We stand together. We do. I'm trying to figure out how I can... Oh, I got the 51 units. Nice. So after I get my Marines researched, I'm going to try to get 10 of them made. And then I'm going to take the 10 Marines that I have, take them to Istanbul, and maybe try to siege that. Whilst I'm at war with them, I'm going to move my 51 units... Defending an offensive line, just moving across Turkey if I can. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good. Which cool. may or may not work out. I don't know. <laughs> I've never done this before. That's it. There's only one way to learn. I uh, know. By we'll making fail. horrible, horrible mistakes. Yeah. You want to go bankrupt? Yeah. I, yeah, I hear I, that's a really good idea. We should do that. When has that ever been a problem? Anti-fascist diplomacy. There you go. I'm doing that. Or anti-capitalist. No, anti-fascist. I mean, they're both bad. Clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Of course. Have you ever oh, um, just fight war goal. killed anybody in a war? Yes, yeah, they were all bad. So I have. I have. Um, cost. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. In Manchu, I have units stationed over there. Should I be moving them from Manchu to help with the northern line and sinking? I don't think it's going to matter. I think I just keep them over there. I think you want that too. So at the end of it, uh, Manchuko? Yeah, they're they're puppet of Japan. So when we do the Japanese thing, yeah. this, so taking Sinkiang is probably the last of my warring effort. I don't know. Maybe I'll just take the bet, and then maybe I'll stop. There are faction members justifying war goals. Hey. You got damn hey. right. All right. Um, let's take a look at this again. I've got 16 units just right over here on the northern border. I don't have them doing much of anything first. Let me just go ahead and get my front line. I think I already have a front line, or at least I did. There's the front line. And then offensive line. Yeah, we want more gear going to our existing stuff. That was my production line. Mm, production efficiency getting up there. Maybe I'll 
will trade one one factory. Do you have extra <coughs> steel? And just there you go, Soviet Union. I will trade one factory to you in exchange for some extra steel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Not 38 yet, although radio is good for the reinforcement rights. I do want that. All right. Yeah, so that's one thing that's nice, right? If we trade within our little faction here, it's, yeah, it's mm. costing me a factory, but you get a factory, so it's, you know, net even. I, sh I should grab construction effort three first, shouldn't I? Oh, I need more than 15% world this. tension to get to war economy. Yeah. That, that's a thing that will happen. Or if you're in a war, that's another way to do it. But the world, the world tension will get there. You might still want to boost your laws to some intermediary stage, right? Like, maybe you could go to, um, like, early mobilization would be better to civilian. Partial mobilization would be, you can do that in 5%, because you need 15% world tension for that. So you could just wait a little bit longer and then go to partial mobilization. What is the world tension? Oh, 10%. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna mostly wait. because of me. Oh, right, because yeah, you're war, war, war. That's fine. And, uh, and Germany, you, actually. I need you to be uh, incredibly large, though. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm assisting with you right now so that you can assist with me later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and then once, once we take Sin Kang, it'll be great because we can just, you know, walk through there and everything. I mean, Sin Kang would probably join the common term anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit moot, but shush. <laughs> we want it. Needs it. Has very few factories, but it's still gonna like double my productivity. Panzer leaders. I don't really need a Panzer leader, although I don't, I don't have Panzers, but I do have tanks. Does it matter? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tank Panzer is just the word. Panzer leader is just the word they use for people who are good at leading armor divisions. I eat tanks. So yeah. Oh, this guy is only capable of leading. 24 divisions, and I've got him leading 52. So I didn't realize I couldn't... Okay, how do I split an army in half? Uh, There is a button for it, actually, with the army selected. Select half of the current divisions. Yeah. It selects it, and then you can just create a new army. Right? So you hit that button, it selects half, and then you just create new army. There it is. 26 and 26 now. But he's still only capable of 24. Yeah, so you can grab an extra couple and shuffle them over. I mean, you can promote a general to a field marshal, but he, like, loses a bunch of stuff when you do that. Mm hmm. Let's go ahead and get the other guy. Things are coming so in. they're technically only good. How big is the penalty? Current penalty, 8.3%. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, you really don't want to exceed it with the, the general. I just noticed that. All right. Yeah. Um, right, okay, so. God, it feels like it's taking me so long, and everybody's like, yes, because it is taking you so long. Um, what was that? Oh, never mind. I got new things. Oh, okay. Also, we should probably put a bit of a pause in here. As promised, there is a lot of action in this particular uh -huh. episode. Uh, in theory, you're fighting over in uh, Spain, although Nat Republican Spain's about to lose. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. In fact, some of your troops might get bopped over there, but... Well, it's a learning experience. Um, I had to do something. Yeah. You'll be able to fight in uh, against Sinkiang over here, too. And that'll go much, much better and much, much easier. You have, like, a front line and, like, a battle plan laid out, like an offensive line? On which one, sorry? Sinkiang. Uh, yes, I do. I uh, basically am just going to be, you know, hold the hold the line, move in. I've got three different battle fronts or cool. offensive lines. All right. So, yeah, we'll put a cut in here. And next episode, we'll start that war. And then after that, I think it's going to be a lot of just uh, industrial buildup, unless you're going to start some shit somewhere. Like I, I might with Turkey, but the thing is, I think I'm still going to be far enough away because I want the I want the Marines, I want the the ten yeah. division Marines, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, and it's worth noting there's two ways you could start the war with Turkey. You can just fabricate a claim, but there's also, I think you can go with a national idea that gives you. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, they have a national idea called Claim the Straits, which gives you claims on Istanbul, Izmit, Bursa, Izmir. Oh, well, I'll probably be going for that then. Make mm -hmm. it easy. Yeah. And more legitimate. Totally legitimate. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, <laughs> folks. See you next time. Later.